The Buzz would like to give a big thanks to AINet for their support. And we mean live from the studios of West TV here in East Perth. Joining me tonight, Nikita Dixon. Uh, well, you're a social media journalist. I am. I write social media blogs for iInet and occasionally for Perth Now and Sunday Times. Wonderful. And Paul Cook, 96FM journalist and secret agent. Uh, and secret agent in my spare time and do a request show on Saturday nights all about the 80s before oh, social 80s. media. We love the 80s. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking about things that we love, uh, Tony Abbott is someone that I love dearly. Take a look at this. Tony Abbott and two other opposition MPs dashed for the door to neutralise Craig Thompson's vote. Uh, no, lock the doors, too late. Uh, Tony Abbott, and you could be our next Prime Minister. Isn't that what we want? I wonder what was going through his head. Like, why didn't he just think, accept the vote, move on, it's not an issue. Oh, no, instead, let's dash for the door and make it something that everybody can see that on television. Can laugh Seems about later. just a little bit childish, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, let's move right along. We've got so much stuff that we've got to get through tonight. If you would like to join us and have your comments come up on the screen, all you've got to do is jump on Twitter and use hashtag the buzz, and we really encourage you to do that. It's the only way we can show you that we are really, truly coming to you live this evening. Nikita, what's trending nationally around Australia and well, as you would have seen in that video earlier, that was the absolute panic that uh, Tony Abbott experienced when Craig Thompson, who he's always said is a criminal, decided with him and decided to make a vote for coalition. So he made a mad dash for the door to avoid that. Now, um, trending on Twitter also is uh, EMA, which is the Enterprise Migration Agreement. So what's happened is Gina Reinhart has been allowed to outsource 1,700 jobs for the new Roy Hill mining project. The problem is, union leaders are saying 130,000 manufacturing jobs have been lost over the last five years. So clearly those 1,700 jobs should be kept in Australia, don't you think? Absolutely. I, I, Paul, th this to me, it blows my mind that we keep talking about unemployment being a problem and yet suddenly we're letting someone bring in 1,700 people from overseas. Well, as somebody said, the idea is long term train the people up, they work in mining now, they gain the skills now, when the mining boom finally dissipates then they can go and move and take those mining skills to other countries and train and bring the money back home. It seems ridiculous to bring in cheap labour and bring no skills back home. Well, I think it's ridiculous as it, well. It I know ridiculous. people that need a job in mining that have the skills I, I can and tell still you now there's one job. particular part of our population that really needs some more employment and that's Aboriginals. Absolutely. We talk about uh, National Reconciliation Week. Yes, that's been trending all over Twitter under uh, NRW 2012 if, you, if you'd like to take a look. Now, National Reconciliation Week is celebrated across Australia between the 27th of May and the 3rd of June. It's to celebrate the anniversaries of the 1967 referendum, which meant that Indigenous people could now be included in the census, and also the High Court Mabo decision 20 years ago as of the June the 3rd, which meant that uh, the Aboriginals and Indigenous people can say that the land is theirs. And I think we forget what a big decision Mabo was at the time. When that Huge. came out, there was panic in the streets that farmers were going to have their land taken away from them. And it took a concerted effort by the government of the time to actually... Yeah, uh, this is where native title came Speaking from. Speaking about having land taken away from you, it's not that long ago that the Queen was here in Perth and she was down on the Esplanade. Now, it seems that... Um, Colin Barnett, dictator Colin, has decided that they're going to dig up that bit of land that the Queen came along and had a barbecue on, and instead they're going to have, create the central business ditch. Yes, Elizabeth Key, the new name for the waterfront district. Madge's Mole, I like as well. Uh, that's, that's also a nice name for it. So Elizabeth Key is the name that the new waterfront the development quarry. will be called. Colin Barnett has, sorry, our Premier Colin Barnett has decided that that's what it's going to be called. He's being decisive about this because he doesn't want to, it's, it's a non-issue, it's the name of so a, a new he's development. He's being decisive about Elizabeth Key, but now he's running a competition to say who gets to name the Perth Stadium. 
She's this watching is because him. everyone has started complaining that they don't like Elizabeth Key. Well, some people do, but I know a Russia's man on Twitter has said, Elizabeth Key, how perfectly vomitous. I think we've missed an opportunity with National Rec Reconciliation Week to tie the two in together. How good would it would have been if he had announced it this week that we're going to call it yeah, the, the original Indigenous name. I agree. Or, well, name but I, I do know that they did it because mm. it is the Queen's Diamond Jubilee this year, so... We're not going to get a lot of support out of Fairfax journalists on that at the moment, though, because they're on strike. They are on strike until 9am tomorrow morning. This is because uh, Fairfax is looking at outsourcing 66 sub-editor jobs. And as a journalist myself, I think it's ridiculous that they're outsourcing these Where jobs. Where are they outsourcing to? New Zealand. Right. So, I mean, I wouldn't think that New Zealand got paid any less than Australian journalists, but... Well, their dollar's worth less, so I guess even if they're paid less. the same, it's a bit cheaper. Um, but editor job isn't quite the same as a journalist job. So there's been a lot of jumping up and down about the fact that you know, it, they yeah. won't know the local lay of the land. But they're basically editing stories. They're not writing the stories. The yep. journalists yep. are still on the ground. But being a sub-editor isn't just about improving the grammar and the spelling. It's also about ch making sure things are factually correct. Yeah. Look, so we could keep talking about this for hours. Could, and in I fact, could. after the show, let's keep talking about it. Let's <laughs> move along now, though. Truckies give Coles the finger in Sydney Rally. Yes, yeah, Sydney has been trending all day and yesterday uh, for an, a bunch of reasons, but mainly because Coles truckies think that their working conditions are unsafe. They've got high demands from Coles on them that they need to deliver their packages faster. So they're saying, and they're attributing four truckie deaths to this. So wow. they, they have had enough. They're out in the streets. They're rallying for safer conditions. This has been an ongoing thing for the past 30 years, truck drivers have been complaining about the deadlines put upon them. Uh, and they've brought in various rules now. They have to fill out log books and they're drug tested. Uh, but it seems to be an ongoing issue and I don't think we'll ever get rid of it. No, no, not at all. Speaking about unsafe working conditions, it appears that there's a polar bear that also has unsafe working conditions. Sunny days for Yupi, the polar bear. And that's the problem for some who want to take her far from Mexico's warm climate. Her cause has sparked an online campaign. Save Yupi. Their campaign only began gaining ground when activists took her cause online. So, Paul Cook, do we actually need to save Yupi? Well, Save Yupi is a web page. It's been a popular trending thing this week. Yupi the bear apparently lives in a barren tropical wasteland. Of course, he's a polar bear. He'd rather be frolicking in the ice and eating fish. Uh, but instead, he's got a bit of water, as you can see, and, uh, and some concrete, and that's pretty much it. However, the thought is, with a lot of these kind of things, we get all excited about one animal in one enclosure in one country. Have a look at all the, the despair in the world when it comes to uh, children, to poverty, to homelessness, to uh, crime and violence. Uh, even we have to look uh, to the Middle East and what happened in Syria this week. And we're jumping up and down about a polar bear. It seems just one of those things that kids like to click. Well, I think the, the issue is more that people think that via social media, they can have some kind of impact by liking something like this UP campaign. They actually have some kind of involvement, whereas they, they don't really. What they need to do is ring up the zoo. A false sense of accomplishment. The Morelia Zoo, it's in Mexico. Give them a call. But Maybe even really donate $20 and say you can send the polar exactly. bear away with this money. Would we do be so something? concerned if Yupi wasn't a very pretty looking polar bear with a cute name? What if uh, this was a viper? Something ugly, really? a horrible. tiger. That's right, a, a, a tarantula who mm. just doesn't get any freedom anymore. Exactly. We wouldn't care as much. I don't much. know if I'd care about a spider, to be honest. Well, exactly. Like that's right. The point it's case. just the fact that it's a polar bear. It's a fluffy polar bear. And it is sad. Look, no animal should be kept in an enclosure which isn't right for them in the right environment. But, mm. but once again, we seem to spend so much time on, on these really small issues and we think that just by yeah. clicking it or yep. visiting it will somehow make a the difference. Slacktivism and moves. Yeah, slacktivism moves is forward. right. Isn't it? It's always the way. Now, uh, I have seen some pretty incredible things on the internet in my time, but I reckon this would probably be one, would, would have to be the most romantic thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I think 
welcome back to The Buzz, broadcasting live around Australia and around the world. If you'd like to see us on the website, wtvperth.com.au forward slash watch. And if you do want to join in and have your tweets read out, just use hashtag the buzz. Now, is it a particularly clever thing to do to take a photo of a whole bunch of cash that you might have and upload the photo to Facebook? Nikita, someone's done this recently and it doesn't strike me as the most intelligent thing to do. No, it's not. And you do find a lot of teenagers doing this, taking photos of themselves with things like their school in the background, their street name. And, and it's just, you're just asking to be stalked and found by somebody. And I think also, uh, if we could take a look at this article. How much money was it, out of curiosity? Um, I don't know, actually. It doesn't actually say in was the story like $20? itself. Have it was we just, got to be, you know, careful? It was just a wad of money. If you leave five dollars so on the bench and somebody sees it in the photo, they're coming around. I'm not sure look, if a wad I, is a measurement. <laughs> I've done something stupid myself. I took a photo of some money on Instagram once, but it wasn't mine, it was my dad's, so it's okay. But I could get beaten up for that. <laughs> no, instead your dad got beaten up. Yeah, he got beaten up. Is that? Speaking of people who got beaten up, let's take a look at uh, Gordon Ramsay getting his money's worth. Uh, Gordon Ramsay is being targeted here. He's a marked man. Something, isn't it? Do you reckon he might have used the F word there? I think so. <laughs> he was using it anyway. He was using it yeah, anyway, that's they exactly right. Uh, Nikita, celebrity tweets, discussions that are happening around the place. Uh, Madonna uh, has got a little bit of a tiff on with Lady Gaga at the moment. Yes, and the Twitterverse has gone crazy. A lot of Lady Gaga fans on Twitter, not so many Madonna fans it seems, because Madonna's gone out and said that uh, her song Express Yourself is very similar to Born This Way. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, pe people on Twitter aren't happy. They think, you know what, Madonna, give it up. Lady Gaga is a star. She hasn't copied you. So, so that's been happening with, uh, with Madonna. The question is, why would she even bother? Hasn't Madonna got better stuff to do? She's in her 50s now. Surely she's got oh, some she's still prime pretty I'm surprised. Come on. I'm a big Madonna fan, and I, I, yep. oh. I don't know why. Let, Let it go, go Madonna. Look at, the, look at the picture on the screen now. She's, she's all right. It's she's got all right. To do she with looks it. great for her age. Now, yeah. speaking of, uh, of talented musicians, Justin Bieber. <laughs> Has hit a photographer. Oh, poor Justin Bieber. Oh, he's a mean He, he did lad. have a, an altercation with a photographer, but I think it was just a case of paparazzi going too far. So um, what's happened is somebody, a paparazzo has just gotten too close to him and he's had a bit of a, a squabble with him, lost his shoe and... The he, who is he going to hit? He's an angry little lesbian. Apparently he was <laughs> boxing with Mike Tyson before no. this. He was. He was having like some boxing lesson with Mike Tyson, as you do. And, uh, and he's come out and the paparazzi have cornered him and he's decided, well, you know, Mike's taught me a couple of moves, I'll bite his ear well, off. Well, he did also tweet a photo of him with Chris Brown, so some people have been saying, oh, he's uh, getting some lessons. He's getting some lessons. Oh. Now, Brian McFadden, who everybody will know from Australia's talent shows, uh, has been ranting on Twitter about Delta. He has. Delta uh, did say in one of her recent interviews, because she's got so much coverage now because of The Voice and her new album. She said she was feeling trapped towards the end of their relationship. So Brian McFadden has come back on Twitter after allegedly a few drinks and said, sometimes silence is golden. People love to try and deflect attention from their own downfalls onto others. And for the record, I've seen it all before. Did he call her a pig? That's the question. No, but he Kerry did. Kerry Katona, I see what you did there. He right? did call his, uh, his ex-wife a pig, pig face, face mole. <laughs> <laughs> Delta, so it's look not out. new to this. Oh, Watch out, Delta. That's terrible. Right, Absolutely he's a charmer, terrible. Isn't he? Now, uh, Delta is obviously a good girl. Another good girl who, well, I don't know. Has she been drinking under the in driving under the influence? Uh, Amanda Bynes. Well, I was a big fan of Amanda Bynes back when she was on the Amanda Show, and it looks like she's had quite a few altercations with police lately. Uh -huh. She she was involved in a hit and run and also a, a DUI. But she's come back on Twitter saying it's not true. I I don't even drink. So she's very yeah. unhappy with the media for reporting on that. Yeah. So let's, let's just take just a look at her mug up. shot. There we go. But I think she looks lovely, considering. That's, that's one of the better looking mug shots. Let, let's also take a look at uh, a mug shot of, uh, of a very beautiful woman, probably my favourite woman in Hollywood at the moment. Who's that? Kim Kardashian. Yes, Kim Kardashian. She's very angry at the British Airways at the moment because somebody stole a pair of sunglasses from her luggage who would given to her by her late father. So she's calling on the airways to have better surveillance of the, uh, better security cameras as well, of the luggage area, so. I already asked my wife if Kim Kardashian followed me home whether or not I could keep her. <laughs> Do you think she'd follow you home? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> and what did your wife say? <laughs> 
No. It's very presumptuous no, of you. I got in trouble. I got in trouble. There's, there's, no, there's no arguing it. Okay, she probably thinks you're a bit shallow and probably thought maybe you should have better taste. She knows oh, I'm Jason's a lot shallow. Jason's a bit shallow. Yeah, very, <laughs> very shallow indeed. Yeah. You'd make uh, a great pair in that case. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, look, I like to keep photos of my favourite things around the place. Kim Kardashian's all over my walls at home. But there's a place where you can actually keep stuff that you find on the web. Now, if Pinterest was real life, would it look like this? Oh, thanks. Oh! Is that a picture of my fiancé? Of course. I so want one like him one day. What? I just love, love, love your style. All right, well, the question is, what is Pinterest anyway? Lots of people are using it. It's got a bit of the buzz happening at the moment. I've tried to use it, and I'm just not a big fan. Nikita, is it a ladies-only website? It's absolutely not a ladies-only website. In fact, quite the opposite. Pinterest is getting lots of attention from all sorts of sectors, particularly tourism, fashion, uh, food, anything that you can get something visual on. I, I think it's not one to be ignored. I think you should be on Pinterest. Well, I am on Pinterest. Let's look really? at my, Let's here's look my, at my iPad got. now. See that? I've got my motorbike there and another picture of my motorbike and a picture of a nice car that I like. Is that your car? And a holiday I want to go on. <laughs> There's been some research done uh, just this past week by a couple of different groups. One is a jewellery firm. One is a marketing firm called Steelhouse. And, of course, the big argument is, is which one is better for making money, Facebook or Pinterest? And it actually turns out, although people spend less time on Pinterest and flick through less pages, those people who are doing that are more keen and more readily will spend on what they see on the Pinterest site. So Very visual medium. Although it's not quite as popular, but it is growing day by day, it certainly seems to have a better plan in store for making money into the future than but Facebook But surely does. not everybody's posting photos of motorbikes and cars like I am. You know what? It's no. doing extraordinarily well considering it's still in a beta version. You have to request <laughs> an, invoca in an invitation to ah. sign up. So considering no, not everyone can at the moment, very popular. Oh, well, if you would like an invite to sign up on Pinterest, let us know here at The Buzz. You can ask on Twitter. Just use hashtag The Buzz and we can send you some invites because that's the sort of lovely people that we are here at The Buzz. Don't forget, if you want to see your tweets on screen, you can actually put hashtag The Buzz on Twitter and we'll read out the best of them. And you may even see some of them on the big screen behind us. Now, coming up in the show, we're, uh, we've actually got quite a few things. We're going to review Facebook Camera. Now, Facebook Camera, I'm not a big fan. We'll find out more about that after the break. And we're also going to talk about Eurovision. I love Eurovision. It's one of my very favourite times of the year. How do you guys feel about Eurovision? Paul, I know you're a big fan. Uh, anything that's flamboyant and colourful, I love. So Eurovision <laughs> is right there. I didn't really get in on Eurovision this year. Well, Although Jedward, I was really entertained I by like them. I like Jedward as well. But this is the winning act. Australia's only live social media TV show and we tricked you at the end of that last segment. You might have thought that Norman the Riding Dog was from Eurovision. He wasn't. It was just a funny video that we found. Alright, Facebook Camera is a new application that's available. If we, uh, if we pull up my iPad now you'll actually be able to see the icon of Facebook Camera. Have we actually got access to that? I think we're connected. There we go. So you can see the icon top right hand corner. I'm going to hit that. This is an application that is primarily designed for the iPhone, uh, but we're running it's it sideways. in two times mode uh, on the iPad instead. So what you can see on this particular screen is the button to actually take a photo. It's sideways, isn't it? We can't actually make that go the right way around. You've got your screen locked. I'm going to go that way and then I'm going to go that way. No, that's not going to rotate for us. Well, we've obviously got some small technical problems here. We tend to have those on the buzz, though. That's what happens with live television. If you'd like to turn your head sideways 90 degrees, you'll be able to see the application there. I'm going to quickly scroll through it because I don't think it's much chop anyway. As we scroll through here, you can see Liliana's photo. You can go sideways through them as well. You can give them a tick or, or not. Sideways <laughs> is a special feature of the It is uh, a special camera. feature. Um, but you know what? As far as Facebook's new... Facebook camera goes, I'm not impressed. 
I think Instagram is by far a much better application. Well, that's why Facebook cameras here is because they bought Instagram and they need to create something for the Instagram fans. Is Instagram something that you use? I do, but yeah, as soon as it started asking me to sign into this social network, I, I gave up on it. So and what about you, Paul? Are you, are you a fan of Instagram? I use several other ones. I use uh, Camera Plus, but I, I don't I bother. Plus yeah, well. I don't bother putting it on a particular site. I just will save it. The well, these photos for yourself <laughs> as opposed to photos for other people to look at. Yeah, well, I'll post it if I need to post it. I don't need to put everything on a particular wall and go and look at my album. If I think something worth posting, I'll just do it with Camera Plus. That's and exactly all the, the problem anyway. with Instagram, is mm. that it, you have to post the photos. post it all up yeah. online. And I don't want to do that. I just want to keep them for myself, because they're pretty. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, now, we did, we did tease you with the idea that we would show you a little bit of Eurovision. Here's the winner of this year's Eurovision contest in Baku, Azerbaijan. Yeah, she's an interesting looking girl, isn't she? But they've won it, so it's back to Sweden next year. And here's a really interesting thing about the Crystal Palace that Eurovision was held in. This is a, a 25,000 seat dome that was built in seven months. And you take a look at the stuff that we do here, our Perth Stadium, uh, Dictator Colin built for us. Uh, that's taken a heck of a lot longer. Four years, four in years fact. Four years and a very expensive project and as well. And non-stop strikes and I'm dramas. I didn't think that you don't really like Colin that much. Not a big fan of Dictator Barnett, no, unfortunately no. not. Uh, but Eurovision was trending as well. So uh, actually, if we take a look at, uh, at some of the trends that we can see around the place, let's have a look what people were actually saying about Eurovision. Uh, Andrew Blue says, Lorene needs to release an album soon. Euphoria is beyond amazing. I don't know if I would have called it Beyond Amazing. There's very little ever in Eurovision that's Beyond Amazing, apart from the costumes. But I was happy to see that uh, there were some Russian grannies coming second. That was in brilliant. Fact, I love the Russian grannies. There was a big controversy about uh, the countries that are um, the uh, Slavic countries voting for their own. They all people. vote for their own. That's what they always do. I would um, vote for my own. I things, think that's fair. Things aren't very uh, happy in the Middle East at the moment. Hula is trending. So looking at worldwide trends, and uh, obviously this is going to be one of the big ones, uh, Syrian forces shelled Hula, which is a town, on Thursday. Massacred more than 100 people. Some of the, uh, the footage was mainly uh, of children, sadly, who were not only just shot uh, in the crossfire, but were bayoneted and blown up at close So they weren't range. just blown up by a, a misguided No, bomb. They, they weren't just they were in murdered. the wrong place at the wrong time. The, the, the rumour is, of course, the Syrian government are denying it, but the rumour is, is that the government actually, troops actually went in and massacred yeah. at close range I, uh, women, children. A remarkable story came out of that. A, a young boy managed to escape being murdered because he covered himself in his brother's blood and lied down dead. And they, uh, yeah, they thought he was dead and moved on. Yeah. That's the only reason he survived. Oh, well, there you go. Memorial Day is also trending. Uh, I've got it up on my iPad at the moment. Uh, Miss Tracy Lee says, and I thought Memorial Day weekend was over, yet here I am at Surrender and the dance floor. What does that even mean? Memorial Day is obviously a big day in the United States, and I think what was different this year than previously is that the speech by the President is usually revolving around how great the troops were, how great the troops are, and how much we believe in the troops and, and America and are we lovely. Uh, but this year he twisted it a little bit because he did mention the withdrawal of the American troops from Afghanistan by 2014. Ah. Uh, and there has been a lot of criticism about that too because the argument is basically as soon as the American troops go out, the Taliban are back in, and we're kind of at square one after yeah. 14 years out of war. Hot well, topic. back to the US. The US is a place where things, weird things always happen. And it just tends to be that things happen the most often in Florida. And, uh, well, let's call it the Miami zombie. We don't know if it's the start of the zombie apocalypse or if, in fact, the gentleman whose face got eaten just had a particularly delicious face. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. Well, here's the thing. When this story first broke, it was two homeless people and one was caught eating the face off of another one. But it turns out that uh, the gentleman, uh, Rudy Eugene, who was the one who was shot, who was the one that was eating the face, uh, apparently had a house, a had a job, um, and, uh, and this and was, was the zombie guy. Was quite a respected person. This is zombie guy. So, as Nazira uh, Bubble says online, does anyone actually believe the police cover-up story that the guy was on drugs? Hashtag Miami Zombie. They actually said he was on a drug called bath salt, which is a legal synthetic drug. Bath salt. He wasn't just putting it, it was salt on the salt. guy's face for flavour. 
No. <laughs> but, uh, but <laughs> There's yeah, chicken it, it salt. You're getting the two confused. Drug that he was on, and a lot of people have said that it makes you feel like you, you don't have any idea what's going on. So. Farley yeah, Bros Radio says Miami Zombies' last words were. In your face. Hey, oh, ding, ding. come on. No, Maybe that's you've got some want. thoughts too. Um, well, to there the buzz. you go. We're right the way through yet another show. Can you believe it? Guys, so quickly. No time whatsoever. Thank you very much for your company this evening. Hashtag the bus if you'd like to talk to us. Thanks to the crew for putting everything together. Thanks to Nikita and Paul. We'll see you all next week at the same time right here on West TV. The Buzz would like to give a big thanks to IINet for their support.